I just hated when a guy thought he could guard me, to be honest with you. I'm like, dude, please, just, uh, just work hard, but you can't stop me. <laughs> The 1994 playoffs were not even started before Chris Webber began dissing Charles Barkley on national TV. In the Nike commercial, Webber talks up his behind-the-back, one-handed, fast-break dunk over Barkley in the first game of the 93-94 season between the Warriors and Suns. Webber was telling to his friend Charles Barkley's famous words at the end, I don't believe in role models, but you mine. Barkley said the quote was false. It happened only with his approval. Barkley overruled his agent to permit Nike, which supplied shoes for both players, to shoot it. He had an unlucky regular season after winning his first and the last league MVP in 93, went through a sore back and torn tendon in his knee. And surprisingly, Charles Barkley and the Suns would face Chris Webber and his Golden State Warriors, coached by Don Nelson. The Warriors were a trash-talking young team combining Weber and Latrell Sprewell. Charles was asked if he expected the Warriors coach Don Nelson to reach into his bag of matchup tricks to get an edge in the series. You're not going to double me? So Nelly says, we're not going to double you tonight. I says, you're not? Phoenix expected Latrell Sprewell to use his quickness on Charles Barkley or all kinds of different things. Golden State thought so much about guarding Charles. Rookie Chris Webber and then Chris Gatling, both 6'10", or reserve 250-pound forward Byron Houston, Billy Owens, or even Arizona small forward Judd Bushler. How many points I'm averaging against them? How many rebounds? They better try something different. Healthy Charles Barkley had done just whatever he had wanted against Golden State that year. He averaged 31.7 points and 11.3 rebounds in three games in the regular season. The plan was to double-team Barkley, front him, run at him when he catches the ball. Or they might decide not to double-team him at all. Instead, they might try to wear him out, put a fresh guy on him every four minutes. The old Celtics philosophy, since Don Nelson was the Warriors coach. Don Nelson did not double-team Barkley in Game 1. Barkley close by Weber. Weber just shaking his head. And the foul. Barkley for three. By 5, 20, 15. Here's KJ. Pretty pass to Barkley. And he's fouled. he picked up a loose ball and threw down a dunk, scored on a driving layup, and stared at Chris Gatling, who fouled him, switched a three-point shot, scored over Bill Owens, who hacked him and made the foul shot, spun around Byron Houston for a layup. Sir Charles was warming up early in the game. As Barkley predicted, no double team. The Warriors paid dearly for that strategy. 18 points and 11 rebounds quickly. 11 of the Suns' final 17 points, Sir Charles made the game's biggest play. With 17 seconds left, the Suns leading by three, he beat Chris Webber in the paint, rebounded Kevin Johnson's missed free throw, and scored. 36 points, 19 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 steals. A monster game one. He can virtually... I take that back. You do learn sort of certain things. I learned that Barkley's still a good player. He's back, regardless. And I learned we don't want to be embarrassed, and we've got to come back and win. Chris Webber was victimized as Barkley gave a clinic, but unfortunately he couldn't stop him one-on-one. -on -one. To answer Webber's Nike ad, Charles Barkley made his film. It was more of an educational video, a basketball clinic. Several times, Weber was isolated on Barkley, and it was no contest. Charles used a spin move or blue right pass or a shot over Weber. I don't think there's one person in the league who can stop a player like Charles Barkley. So it's very hard to stop him one-on-one, -on -one, said Weber. Not only Weber, 
but Latrell Sprewell came at Barkley full swing earlier in the regular season and the playoffs. He also needed a teaching lesson. As expected, the Warriors started doubling Barkley after his epic game one, but Chuck found open teammates with eight assists next to his 20 points. This time, Kevin Johnson exploded with 38 points. Ainge, West, AC Green all played big, and Sprewell and Weber were still talking trash. When the game was over, Charles Barkley said, I've never seen a team talk so much mess. While Chris Webber was staring down at the Suns bench, his teammate Sprewell was doing the trash talking job. After throwing a nasty dunk with 3.9 seconds left in the first half, a jam that gave the jacked up Warriors a 56-53 lead, Sprewell got in Barkley's face and started talking trash. Barkley could have talked back, but he didn't. He said, just play the game. Gets it back. Oh, well. Oh, that's well. Pretty well. And 6 5. Sir Charles knew that the series was over. Weber and Sprewell talked a lot, but Don Nelson wanted to see his players with more playing and less talking. The trash talking Warriors were on the edge of elimination, and Barkley had to answer trash talking youngsters with a strong game three and a friendly farewell to Don Nelson and his doubling hacking tactics. The Chuckster didn't miss a shot in the first quarter and didn't slow down. His total tied for the third best in playoff history behind Michael Jordan 63 and Elgin Baylor 61. His display was the exclamation point to the previous two games. It was a good workout. It was three tough games. The first one was rough, the second one was rough, and the third one was roughest of them all. Sir Charles dared the Warriors to play him one-on-one -on -one this time, and Don Nelson took the dare, and Barkley made them pay dearly for it. After scoring the Suns' first 12 points, he ran by Don Nelson and asked him, you gonna double me? Nelson said, no. So I scored like 17 points the first quarter, so I run over again. I said, let me ask you, you're not gonna double me. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you can get as many as you want. I said, okay. <laughs> and Barkley went on to score 27 points in the period despite his aching back. Nobody thought he was going to make all his shots. Instead, he had one of the most spectacular games the NBA ever witnessed, 56 points at the end. Chuck's 38 first half points set an NBA playoff record, and he finished the series with 112 points. If you take away the drive, he has a jump shot. Take away the jump shot, and he has the drive. It's hard, and you're caught in between. Billy Owens, Chris Gatling, Weber, Sprewell, and the Warriors squad faced an angry Charles Barkley in Game 3. Trailing 107-106 entering the final period, the Suns built its lead to 125-117 with 7.35 to play when Sir Charles converted a three-point play and notched his 50th point. Barkley gets around Houston, reverse layup, count the basket, drew the foul, Barkley with 49 points. The Warriors cut the lead to 131-129 on a basket by Sprewell but couldn't get any closer because Phoenix missed three of their 19 shots in the final period. The Warriors talked the talk, but Barkley walked the walk. Along the baseline, Barkley, two more. He's got 56 points. Charles got to be seven away from... Nice drive on the baseline. He has now 56 points. and said the last word after the three-game, high-tempo, high-scoring, trash-talking series. Chris Weber spoke to Charles after a 56-point game and said, I'm going to take your place in the future. It was an apology after the Nike ad and taunting in the regular and playoff games. And Charles said, who's your role model now? <laughs>